Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, now for the second speaker. Uh, you don't know how much, how difficult it is to understand the data that comes from AI until you work on it. It's really hard to visualize data without something that helps you look at the data visually. So Kevin, who will be talking about this, let me introduce him to you. Uh, Kevin Hu is the co-founder and CEO of Quantify, Quantify, which builds enterprise data analysis tools that combine artificial intelligence with intelligence augmentation. He recently earned his PhD from MIT Media Lab, where his research focused on automated data science. In his presentation, Kevin Hu will share the fascinating vision of data democratization. Let's welcome him. Well, thank you all for being here, and congratulations to the innovators, and thank you for Greg. Uh, the future is very, very exciting, and I'm thankful to be here today presenting until my digital twin will give a better presentation than me, and I'm sure that'll happen very soon. So what I'm presenting today is more related to prior research. It's joint work between the MIT Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, MIT CCL, and the MIT Media Lab, and it's structured around three vignettes. But the main motivating problem is that, as we know, big data is everywhere, and the volume of data is increasing across domains. In just the past year, 30 zettabytes, or 30 billion terabytes, just a mind-blowing amount of information is generated across domains, from the enterprise to social media to medical settings, you name it. And furthermore, this flow of data is generated at an exponentially increasing pace, such that 90% of the data generated historically was generated in just the past year. This supply of data is met in concert with an increasing demand for data-driven decisions. In the latter half of the previous decade, adoption of data-driven decision-makings increased 300% in US manufacturing firms, and this has paid off across sectors. For example, in 20,000 small and medium enterprises, the adoption of data-driven decision-making has led to a positive effect on market performance. And the question that we try to answer is, OK, how can we make data analysis more accessible to everyone? And in order to address that question, we try to drill down to the core fundamental components of data analysis all the way from data collection to data preparation to data analysis and data visualization. And this talk will be related to the very first, which is data preparation, and the very last, which is data visualization. So to begin, I ask the question, can we develop a data exploration system that is powered by recommendation? Instead of telling you what that looks like, I can show you what it looks like. So if you go to dive.media.mit.edu, you can create a project. In this case, we have a hypothetical project related to analyzing university faculty salaries. If you upload your data set, in this case, it's a flat file, a CSV, on your desktop, we automatically infer the best possible data model that describes your data set. And from here, Instead of manually specifying what the ideal data model is or creating data visualizations through coding, we recommend what we think are the most relevant visualizations so that you can click through and explore your data and save it. And as you continually select fields, instead of saying, I want to see this visualization related to this field, can we give you all the possible visualizations? Because we reach the point in time in which running queries is much cheaper than expressing queries uh, in a domain-specific language. And this holds true not only for visualizations, but also different data analyses, like running uh, comparisons across groups, running correlations, and finally, running regressions. And to top it all off, this starts from data preparation to visualization to analysis, and everything that you've saved, you can export as uh, interactive, live, uh, linear lit narrative. And since we released Dive last year, 
It has been adopted and used by over 15,000 users who have uploaded in access of 8,000 data sets and has been deployed at large enterprises like Colgate, Estee Lauder, and Deloitte. And I offer a few design considerations for building these sorts of data analysis systems. The first is, as you saw, a recommendation process that is built around first enumerating all of the possibilities, then letting a user filter them down based on their preferences, and finally scoring it based on the relevance of a visualization to an analyst's uh, domain knowledge. And on the interaction side, we broke down the workflow into different visualization analysis tasks. We combine populated defaults so that you can avoid having the blank slate uh, with uh, defaults that you can continually and incrementally select. And finally, we distinguish between different recommendation types. And you might ask, OK, does this actually impact uh, analysts in the real world? And what we did was that at Deloitte and uh, other consulting firms, we had half of their users use Dive, half of their users use Excel. We gave them a data set, and then we asked them to visualize and analyze it. And on average, these were all consultants. They are master Excel users, as we know. The, the users were significantly more successful in creating visualizations. They were faster at completing all of the visualization tasks and more successful at completing the data analysis tasks. And this was without any prior training in Dive and lots of experience using uh, Excel. And some takeaways are that Dive enables a recommendation driven data exploration workflow. It increases task performance and has been adopted by tens of thousands of users. And it's open source. I encourage you to check it out or send it over to your data scientist. The media follow-up question is, OK, this is a rule-based system in which a lot of the heuristics are coded in by hand. Can we learn visualization recommender systems directly from data? And this is work that we published in Kai and presented last May. We walked through Dive. Uh, and this is only one of many recommender systems in the research literature today. Other ones include data to viz from IBM, Draco Learn from the University of Washington, and DeepEye from Tsinghua University. The idea is that they train a machine learning model on visualizations and data sets. And so a user can upload a, a data set, and it'll automatically recommend a visualization. And as we know from most machine learning models, it is limited by the quantity and quality of your training data. If you have a very small training set, or if it's garbage in, uh, it's going to be garbage out. So we looked online to try and find a large corpus of data sets and visualizations. And in particular, we looked towards Plotly, which is a drag and drop interface for creating data visualizations. We scraped 2 million visualizations and the underlying data sets. And after deduplicating by user, we have the largest corpus of uh, training sets for visualization recommenders. And the idea is that for every single data set, we extract single column features, which describe the type and the statistical properties of every column, pairwise column features that describe, for example, the correlation between two numeric columns. And we aggregate those into, data, into features that describe the entire data set, 841 in total, that characterize the structure and statistical properties of the two million data sets in our corpus. And for each corresponding visualization, we have two visualization, what we call design choices. So to give you an example, if you're in Plotly, you can choose to visualize your data set as a scatter plot, line, line chart, bar chart, box plot, and so on. You can also, on the encoding level, say, for this given column, is it encoded on the y-axis or the x-axis? And this is our prediction task. And we train a neural network on the data set features we just described to predict these design choices. And the results were really surprising to us, because at the time, there were almost two strands of data visualization literature. One of them treated visualization as a very bespoke and creative task in which each data set is unique, and each analyst has their own taste. 
when it comes to creating visualizations. There's another camp which says that for every data set, there is a maximally effective way to visualize it. And it turned out that people are strikingly regular when they visualize data. And this, can be, this regularity can be captured by machine learning models. So on the left-hand side, you see the accuracy of our models to predict the visualization type. So in an arbitrary data set, we can predict the, the type that a human analyst uses with over 90% accuracy. And for an arbitrary column, we can predict whether it's encoded on the x-axis or the y-axis with over 80% accuracy. And furthermore, from the models that we train, we're able to extract heuristics that can inform best practices for visualization going forward. For example, whether a data set is encoded, is, is encoded using a scatter plot or a line chart depends on the statistical properties, like the entropy and the skewness, the number of outliers in the data set, the dimensionality, so the number of data points, and finally, other features like the sortedness. And the immediate question is, OK, we are able to, in effect, reproduce the choices that a real human analyst makes on their own data set. But what if they didn't make the correct choices to begin with? To evaluate the most effective visualization, we relied on crowdsource consensus. So we took a data set, we visualized it many possible ways, and had 99 mechanical Turk workers look at the data set, and we measured which one they thought was most effective. The random baseline is on the bottom, and humans, uh, not only the mechanical Turk agents, but the original Plotly analysts are encoded in blue, and our model was able to succeed to exceed human performance and the performance of other rule-based models. Some takeaways from VisML are that all visualization recommender systems or any machine learning model depends crucially on the amount of data available, and that publicly available repositories are a very rich and abundant resource of these data set visualization pairs. That machine learning models trained on that corpus can accurately predict the design choices made by real humans. And finally, that we are able to exceed human performance at predicting a crowdsourced benchmark. Last vignette before everyone falls asleep. We know that data visualization and many data analysis tasks are prefaced on the quality of the data coming in. This depends on accurately detecting the data types. So this work was published at KDD this past August, and the question is, how can we make semantic type detection, not just regular type detection of string or decimal, but whether data columns correspond to real-world concepts? Can we make that process more robust, accurate, and comprehensive? And existing tools which you might use, like Trifacta, Power BI, and Tableau, have some room for improvement, for lack of a better phrase. Such that in Power BI today, there are about one dozen types that they detect, um, including time and date. And furthermore, this type detection is extremely brittle. So if you upload a data set to Tableau of cities, as well as their location and longitude and latitude, but you don't label the columns, it'll detect everything as a string or a decimal. And this is the state of the art of matching-based approaches based on regular expressions, which look at the patterns of strings, or dictionary-based approaches, which have uh, lookup tables. And we can just show you, at, you know, the punchline, which is what Sherlock is able to do. So Sherlock, if you upload a data set which has missing values, malformed values, in other words, it's generally dirty, as we know that a lot of real-world data is, that Sherlock is able to accurately detect 75 types, ranging from the country to name to longitude and latitude, even if the data is, in this case, intentionally destroyed. So how does this work? The key idea is that column headers often label the semantic type of the corresponding column value. So if you have an Excel spreadsheet. How you label the column is often the type of the rows underneath it. So for example, in this data set of continents, it's a bunch of continents. And we take that idea and scrape almost every single data set from the web. 
So millions uh, from the web tables corpus to, on, to civic portals like uh, open uh, city repositories and to the data sets that are uploaded to many eyes and other data visualization tools. So all in all, we have a half a million columns that correspond to 75 semantic types. Some examples of these include city, product, elevation, and depth. And we characterize each of these data sets by the statistical properties, the character distributions, as well as the semantic properties of the words within the data set. We train a multi-input neural network, and we find that, as with visualization recommendation, machine learning models are far exceed the state of the art based on regular expressions, and also far exceed uh, crowdsourced human evaluations, which is that if we had everyone in this room look at a data set and try to predict, OK, what is the type of data here? You might get an accuracy of 32%, whereas our model achieves almost 90%. And furthermore, there's a huge opportunity for including a human in the, loop, in the loop, such that if we reject predictions with a low confidence, the accuracy of our model approaches 100. Some takeaways from Sherlock are that the web provides a very abundant uh, corpus for training type detection systems at scale, and that this sort of neural network far exceeds uh, human performance. Some applications include incorporating this into existing systems, schema matching, and automated data cleaning. Those are the three vignettes about everything from visualizing data to training machine learning models for data visualization, and finally, machine learning models for type detection. And I'm happy to answer any questions right now. Thank you. <laughs>